Peace to the family. We about to go in super hard in the paint tonight. Super hard in the paint tonight. It's so great to be here with you, ladies and gentlemen. You could be anywhere tonight, but you chose to be here with me, so I will not let you down. I appreciate it. Let's turn all the way up in the name of this knowledge. I got about 20 minutes that this clip could fill, so we're gonna bust out done with this knowledge. It's called Gold in a Crisis. First thing I want you to do is make sure that you share this video with everybody you know, because in this day and time, we need this information. That's a fact. Secondly, I want you to go to IamBrotherPolite.app. That is a website towards the app when the app comes out. It's a landing page for the app. That's why it's just one page. It's a landing page. I am brotherpolite.app. You're going to go there for all your free newsletters, your updates, and these free PowerPoints and these free videos that I do. We'll give it to you for free. And the only thing that's different, you're going to have more notes than that of the PowerPoints here. <laughs> okay, that's fair enough. And again, share this video with all that you know and share it with two celebrities that you feel need to know. Share it with some people that you don't know and share it with the people that you do know. That's how you contribute to the movement. Gold in a crisis. No one with power will teach you how to take it from them. I'll say that again. No one with power will teach you how to take it from them. Would you? I very much doubt that. You're going to teach other people's children how to take power away from your children? So we got to be realistic when we talk about that educational system. So first and foremost, I want to talk to you about invest now. Everybody talks about the volatility of the stock market. They say it's a bear market. They say it's in a recession. Most importantly, they say this is not the time to buy anything. You can't trust the market and everything's at an all-time low. Now, correct me if I was wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong. Generally speaking, if things are at an all-time low, that's normally the time you want to buy. What is the whole Black Friday thing about? Black Friday is when, oh, shit, it's cheap. Let's go out there and buy it. But when everything is for sale or very cheap on the stock market, everyone says, no, this is not the time to buy. It's too risky. Everything costs too little. And when it costs a lot, it just costs too much. And I don't want to take the risk. So I'm telling you, people in position of power have spread this rumor worldwide and enforced it or promulgated this idea that you should not invest in the bear market because the people of power want to rest assured that you remain powerless, all right? And so here's a prime exemplification of that matter. Let's look at iPad. Let's look at the iPod Shuffle, October 23, 2001, where it costed $399. Let's now go to original base model iMac, which costed $1,299. And lastly, we see the original Mac, which cost $2,495. What is the point of this? Here's the point. Instead of buying the iPod in 2001, when it came out at a price, retail price that is, for $399, what if in 2001, instead of buying the iPod, you bought the stock for the same amount of money. Well, those shares to present day roughly would have made you to present day $58,000. $399. Instead of buying the mechanism, you say, hey, let me buy the stock. And those shares would have gave you $58,000. And that is 14,500%. That of the amount of money you invested. Now let's look at the original base model iMac, which cost $1,299. If you were to have invested this $1,299, and I actually forgot to put the date there, so this is August 15, 1998. I left the date out, just for the record. Okay, so in 1998, if you were to spend $1,299, not on the mechanism, but on the stock, those shares, to present date would give you $178,000, which is 13,500% more or that of the amount of money you put up. But even more shockingly, if you were to spend the $2,495 on the first Mac, instead of on the computer itself, if you would've took that money and put that into the stock, 
corresponding with the same. You would have here a million dollars today since 1984. I was born in 1983. <laughs> My father would have put some money in that. It would have been a wrap. We'd have had a million dollars and my father would have just bought that. And I'm going to tell you, I was told that we had one of those damn computers. And I sit here today like, damn, we could have been a millionaire. Y'all spent the 2400 on the computer. And that 2400 in shares today would have been $940,000 plus. So what's the moral of the story? When you see new technology come out, instead of being patrons or consumers of the product, invest in the company for the same dollar amount at least once. And just weather the storm. Because guess what? Them stocks had to go up and down and up and down. Yo, sell it because it went down. But again, I showed you, those prices represent, if you bought it, no matter what, it would eventually lead to that today. So of course the stock went up and of course the stock went down and it went up and it went down and it went up and it went down. But if you just held tight and say, I don't give a damn if it goes up or goes down. I'm going to wait. Today you have a million dollars if you bought that computer over there. We're talking about gains of over 13,000%. And in this particular instance, over 30,000%. They don't teach that in school. Ownership before patronization. Ownership before consumerism, I should say. <clears throat> Buy the stock before you buy the product. If the product is that enticing, then buy the stock. And if you can't afford to do that, don't buy the goddamn product, unless it's an absolute emergency. Use your damn hands instead of type. Stop putting money in your children's hands. Okay, we said children, so who's the parent? Karen. Remember this Gucci conspiracy, 2019, in February, February 7th? That's when they apologized. And everybody said, oh, polite. You're a bitch. If you ain't gonna go and burn Gucci. You and Mayweather are bitches. Y'all out there, Saxon Avenue, acting the fool. But my brothers and sisters that said we were acting the fool came up with this notion that we should boycott. And that's cool. But for a duration of 90 days, there was a maturation date on a boycott. What kind of people boycott and already know when they're going to tap out? Just the thought of boycotting and, and being revolutionary made people fatigue and they already, uh, I just thought about it. You're going to start this shit in 90 days. That was insane to me. But more importantly, what we need to realize is the road to hell is paved with good intentions. So what this means is your heart is in the right place, but your economics and your socio-political Disposition is not in the right place. You need to have thinkers there that are not acting on emotion so you can be as effective as possible when it comes to executing a boycott or any form of political or social remonstrance. Okay, that's very important. So we're gonna go to Karen. And what we didn't realize is that Karen owns 15 clothing companies in itself. Gucci is just one of 15 of them. And the reason why this is important, we'll go there. I want to show you this chart right here. This chart is very important. And here you'll see on this chart, goes back five years, but I, want to, I put a line right here. You'll get the PowerPoint for free when you register to the website. But right here is February 1st. The apology for Gucci, that statement was issued February 7th. So this is the marker for February 1st. And I want you guys to realize something. February 1st, the stock started going upwards. And on February 7th, when they apologized, the stock continued to go upwards. So what, this is, what does this tell us about our boycott? Something about our boycott encouraged sales. It didn't go on decline to the damn coronavirus for the most part. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But something about our boycott must have been the impetus for this stock to grow. So there's two things that we need to gather from here. One, it was a very ineffective boycott, and I'm going to tell you one of the things that caused this growth. In our anger for Gucci, many of your celebrities and friends alike, what they said was, the hell with Gucci. We're going to put our money into another white brand. And then put it into St. Laurent, and a lot of them put it into Balenciaga. 
unbeknown to them, to buy Balenciaga was one the same as buying Gucci just with different names on the clothing because it feeds the parents. Okay? You're feeding the parent. That's right, baby. That's the issue with the situation. The issue is you didn't realize when you bought Balenciaga, you were still buying Gucci because the parent company carried. So the emphasis to not buy Gucci and buy other clothing, we turned around and bought other clothing that in turn was like buying Gucci. Because the people that preyed on your emotion and burnt things in front of you and people calling me, yo, you seen this rapper burnt his Gucci? You saw that rapper burn his Gucci? You gonna burn your Gucci, bro? And then the same rappers turned around and put on Balenciaga proudly. But I know that they were ignorant too. But this is what I'm saying. You can't just ask me to jump on the emotion ship. I'm not with it. We already came on a ship called Jesus and, and, and by way of John Hawkins, by way of Queen Elizabeth. I'm not jumping on no more damn ships to get caught out there again. And secondly, here's the other thing we need to realize. If we employ group economics and we really was mad at Gucci, here's the reverse psychology. Because clearly, when we say F Gucci, don't buy Gucci, clearly the stock went up. I got the proof right here, and you can check it out yourself. You go look up the ticket symbol for Karen, and you'll see the stock went up during that time. February 7th is the apology. February 1st is where I put the market so you can get an idea of where the stock went. So it's reverse psychology. So how about this reverse psychology? We should have bought a bunch of Gucci, but not the clothing, but the stock. We should have bought ownership into the company. As a community, all of us that's angry, so we can have a say and a stronger pull. And if we pull out, we can take that same thing and go to their competitor. And then we want to go deeper. We can start having conversations about buying preferred stock with dissolution and also insurance. We can start having different conversations. And in fact, we need to start having these conversations in the community. And I'm daring enough to do it because I know how people act when it comes to economic lectures and presentations. Y'all normally, uh, y'all don't give no love to that. I just happen to be one of those people on the internet that y'all do give a high reception to when it comes to this type of material. And I appreciate it because I put a lot of effort into this because we have to raise our common sense of numbers, especially when it comes to consumerism. We got to raise our cognition of politics, especially when it comes to consumerism. All right? So let's go to the next slide. This is very important. So stop putting money in their children's hands <laughs> and understand where their parent is. This always gets me, and I talk to y'all on Facebook about this a lot, particularly Facebook and YouTube. I'm gonna, I'm gonna holler at you. Go ahead. So what happens is, from pre-K to 12th grade, it's 14 years of schooling. And in those 14 years of schooling, you don't learn nothing about food, clothing, or shelter. Food, clothing, or shelter. You learn nothing about it. And that's a problem. And the reason why that's a problem is because how are you going to be a functional adult if you don't know how to make applicable the themes of food, clothing, and shelter? Isn't that the purpose from pre-K to 12th grade, 14 years ago in school, you don't know how to cook now. From pre-K to 12th grade, 14 years ago in school, you don't know how to crochet, you don't know how to sew. And in fact, if you learned the aforementioned things, you learned it outside of school in tradition, or for someone just teaching you on the strength, or by way of your own curiosity and being autodidactic. But school certainly hasn't taught you how to cook. And when I say cook, we're not just talking about cooking. If the community in which the school is erected has a high populace of diabetics, then when you go to school and you go to home ec, they should teach you something about blood sugar and glucose, and glucagons and glycogen, and receptors, and enzymes and proteins. They should teach you these things in home ec so you know how to cook foods to avoid what is consistent in that community as far as the plagues. See? So we know it's a setup. Because no one with power is going to teach you how to take their power. And no one with power is going to teach your children how to compete with their children for power when they're gone. I don't think you would even do that. And then, on top of it all, when it comes to shelter, you learn nothing about real estate. You don't learn about UCC, Uniform Commercial Code, financial statements, security agreements. You don't learn about purchase agreements. You don't learn about earnest money deposits. 
You don't learn about mortgages. You don't learn about mortgage hypothecation. You don't learn about properties on assignment. You learn nothing. You don't learn about administrative affidavits of specific negative affirmatives for opportunity to cure and counterclaiming of averity. You learn about none of these things. But somehow, once you get a diploma at 17 or 18 or 19, you're supposed to know how to survive. The only thing you're going to know how to do is fill out a job application, and they barely taught us that in school. <clears throat> okay? By then, you would have messed up your credit a few years later, down the path. They don't teach you about credit in school either. It's an atrocity, and it's also a setup. Let's go to the next slide. So 680 is the new 540. What is that? Well, here you can type the same thing here in Google. It says, is the coronavirus about to wipe out FHA lending? OK, I want you all to read this article in your free time. You can type in this through the Google search and find the article. I still, I'm still working on it, though. So the FHA lending, what is that? Well, let's just say these are loans for people that are high risk. More times lower income community or people with horrible credit. So generally, you still can get into the property if your credit is about 680. But if your credit is not 680, it gets a little shaky. But this was the high risk loan. So now 680 is starting to look like 540 out here. So basically, this is war against the lower income community. That's what this is. This is, look, if 680 becomes the new 540, then what is the criteria to get a home? It's probably going to be like 740. <laughs> Most of us don't even see the light of day when it comes to 7. And when we, we get 7, we like 701 or 700.2. 680 is going to be the new 540 because lenders are saying, hold on. We just heard you tell everybody they ain't going to have to pay their rent or their mortgage for six months. What do you think people statistically who have less than 680 credit scores are going to do when they hear that? Woo! They're going to lie to themselves and believe that they will be able to pay later on. These are people who are already considered high risk and can't handle falling behind their bills. And keep in mind, they make the interest rates higher for the people who are higher risk who they've already determined can't afford the loan that they gave them. This is why I say I'm not only too smart to be broke, but it costs way too much to be poor. It costs way too much to be poor. These are facts, not gossip. These are facts. I'm saying these things to prepare you guys because if you don't fix your credit right now, you're going to be in a space where no one's going to give you a home because when they heard, hold on, you just told the high risk people that they ain't got to pay their rent if they don't have it. On top of that, where are these high-risk people going to get a job? Because they're not going to walk back into their job. Thirdly, they say, you know, let's do the statistics. They said, if hmm, you told them six months, let's see three months. In three months, they calculated it and they said, oh, it's going to look like we're going to have to come 30 billion, billion, 30 billion dollars out of our pocket as lenders. Uh, let's look at it nine months down the line. Nine months down the line, if you gave them nine months, it'd be $100 billion. Then look at the stimulus package and what they approve of, what they approve for, and what the homeowners are approved for, and they said it doesn't meet, it doesn't match. It was a huge contradiction. No amount of money you're going to give us as lenders for relief, no, money, uh, no amount of money you're going to give to the homeowners for relief, will the $100 billion be satisfied? So now you're talking about six months. The 30 billion wasn't going to be satisfied with the QE or the quantitative ease. So how is something in between three months and nine months going to help us out in this situation? If three months wouldn't work, you told them six. So right now, Linus is like, uh, we're going to make shit harder now for anyone from this point forward to get anything. And as the months go by, FHA loans are probably going to dissipate somehow or the other. Or they're going to find some loopholes in the game because they're not about to lend people who are high risk anything, understanding from the time they purchased the home, they ain't going to have to pay for nothing six months from that time. Five months from that time, four months from that time. So you get in a home right now, six months from that time, you off the hot seat. 
<laughs> and then now six months later, you gotta catch up. There's a forbearance, as they call it. They ain't looking to hear that. So 680 isn't gonna be good enough, long story short, family. So as adults, as much as we may wanna debate about theology, and I love it, as much as we like gossip, you know, Brother Polite got locked up. I've only been locked up for one day in my life. And that's what it is. Rikers out. As much as that's entertaining, it doesn't pay the bills. True or false, it never pays the bills. This is the information. Be careful for people that waste your time. You fuck around and lose two hours out your life watching gossip. And you can't get those two hours back. You mess around and lose one hour out your life because of gossip. And you can't get that hour back. And one day you're out here looking for your home. I am telling you that this coronavirus situation, if it ended today, you're still going to need about a year and more change to recover. If this ended today and the world went back to some kind of normal circumstances, it would still take you, the average brother and sister out there, a year and change to recover. Because first of all, three out of four of us have a credit score that's less than 640. That is 75% of our populace. 680 is what gets you in the damn door. 680 is becoming the 540. 75% of us is under 640. I just need y'all to do the math. We gotta have real conversations, otherwise a lot of us are gonna be out on these streets because these banks don't give a hell. They'll make everybody homeless. They all just keep making money. They're making the money to trick your ass into thinking, well, don't hustle now. Don't fix my situation. Don't hook up my credit. I got six months for forbearance. And when you come into that, they say, well, you know, even though we told you you didn't have to pay it then, you're going to have to pay it now. Who said you're going to get a job after that? The market is horrible. It's going to take some time to climb back up. That's going to be, at best, a year and a half. At best. And that's if this thing cleans up within the next two, three months. You think the NBA wants to get rid of hundreds of millions of dollars for the playoffs? The possibility of LeBron's Lakers versus Kawhi's Clippers in a battle with LA to see who's going to play against the Bucks? You think they're going to lose that money? This year had very high potential to break records. Especially considering Kobe Bryant has died on the day that the place where he's from, Philly, the 76ers was going against the Lakers, the last team he was on. It's a damn soap opera. And the NBA canceled their season officially today. It's done. If the NBA cancels their season, people, niggas better run like hell. If that means this shit is on fire for real. This means it's on fire for real. It's hell on earth. Because the NBA was like, uh, we're going to push the season back. Uh, we just gonna jump into the playoffs. Uh, we gonna, they like, y'all can stop that shit. Uh, yo, just cancel it. We got work from up top, yeah, it's just cancel. We just gonna start over next year. Once that happened, I said, yo, they gave up hundreds of millions of dollars. We're in deep duty. <laughs> it's just for real. I gotta break it down in simple terms. The mortgage hypothecation, the FHA loans and all that, it's just getting ridiculous. So let's just say deep duty. Let's be more mature. Deep excrement or fecal matter or feces or defecation. Whatever euphemism you need. Let's go. So they cannot deny you a credit because of your race, but they certainly can deny you a credit because of your zip code. How about that? And we do know races exist in clusters per each zip code. So it's damn near the same thing. So not only is 680 the new 540, not only are they looking to make sure that these FHA loans dissipate, because high-risk people became more riskier than ever. This is a war against lower-income communities. But on top of that, you're already in areas that's already redlined, which are the areas that we'd be damned if we give you credit. If we do, maybe we give you two, three, four, five hundred dollars. So what I'm saying is, my good brothers and sisters, when Brother Polite 
tells you last year, the political polarization, the global uncertainty, we had another pandemic, we had one pandemic, one more major talk of war away from our lives changing. And there's gold in the crisis, but you have to prepare yourself for that due date. I'm telling you now, because what brothers and sisters like to do, for those that have prepared, they like to get mad at them for people who prepared. So a year and change from now, when you see certain brothers and sisters living better because they studied during these hours where they wasn't at work because you got laid off, because they studied long enough to prepare for this day and time, now everyone owe you something because you was watching gossip. Why you allow agents in your community, I'm gonna say this, why you allow agents in your community whose sole responsibility is to get you to defer your attention away from your responsibilities as an adult, as a parent, as a significant other, because you didn't have the mental fortitude to come to terms with the circumstances that exist right before you. But you rather escape mentally and look at something that doesn't demand nothing of you. You will only have yourself to blame. Because somebody was sharing this information at pivotal moments in our black history. And unlike all the other eras, it's been documented that someone shared this information with you. The question is, what will you do with the knowledge? I don't give a damn if you upset with polite charges for this, that, and the dirt. Well, just because workers are unemployed don't mean the entrepreneur is supposed to be. And furthermore, I give so much free information and I go out my way to give you this information, give you some, some acknowledgement of what's going on, some cognizance, raise your cognizance of what's going on. That in itself is gold. Because this most likely was not in conversation. Today, it won't be tomorrow, and it damn sure wasn't yesterday. And that was yesterday's news. This FHA law. This, they want to get rid of mortgages, especially for people at a certain credit score. They want that shit to be at seven and change before you can qualify for the things you qualified before then. So when I tell you, yo, get the, get the master course at 250, get the credit restoration in two to three weeks, not only will we remove all the negative items of your report, we'll add positive items to your report, boost your credit score, synchronize the raising of your advantage in your FICO score. And in turn, what we'll be able to do is what? You'll be able to use that as a segue into other opportunities so you can now buy homes. So you can have some kind of money at your disposal. And it's always going to represent 100 grand or more. A combination between credit cards, personal loans, and or business loans. Or getting a house, and at least the house represents a certain amount of equity. But we can play games with these people if you want. You go to the next slide. We can play games. So this is a dead cat bounce. I'm gonna stop right here. Cause I gotta do more work. It's been a long day. But this is dead cat bounce. And so with dead cat bounce, just tells you that when the stock market is on decline, it has these jumps out of nowhere. I'm actually gonna go over this another day. That's why I'm stopping it here. And keep in mind, we have the gold in the crisis class. That is $99. We're going to go very in depth in elaborate detail about the stock market. We're not going to spend time dealing with philosophy. We're going to deal with execution and understanding so you can take advantage of this day and time. See, when I showed you what a stock when I showed you what a stock was what it costed, and what it's worth today, as far as that value, as far as if you would have invested in the company as opposed to the product. That's valuable information. That's, that's a very valuable perspective because it gives you strategy and it gives you approach. Understanding that the hell that this alludes to can be your heaven. There's gold in the crisis. Because the dead cat bounce represents a market that's on the clock. And oftentimes they say when it's a recession and then things look up, all of a sudden it goes down. Things look up and all of a sudden it goes down. Well, let me tell you this. 
tomorrow's opening, as far as the market is concerned, I'm up. And I'm in high anticipation of the drops. And my only conversation is, I expect shit to be going down tomorrow. South. Deeper than down south. I expect this shit to have a down south accent. Okay? And what I'm expecting is, of myself, is one dilemma. Do I buy tomorrow or do I buy Tuesday and hopes it's a little low? And whenever I buy, I'm putting thousands on it. Because the dead cat bounce happened already this last week. And we're on the bounce phase. It was up for like four days straight. And on Friday, it closed out with the drop. Pop! I know this economy has no business looking good for two, three days straight. So I know it's an illusion. Because ships can't leave the dock. And planes ain't filled up with people going left and right. We can't even leave the country. So if the market looks like it's going up, it definitely got to go back down ASAP. Because that's a lie. It's an illusion. So that's called the dead cat bounce. For me, I'm anticipating the bounce. It may not be as high as the last one. Because normally when something bounces, it don't come up as high as the first bounce. That will be crazy. Nonetheless, it's going to go down and go back up. The second I feel it, if I see a real dramatic drop tomorrow, I'm buying. I will only hold out till Tuesday. Well, at, at that point, Tuesday, I'm going nuts. It's a clearance set. I'm on the clearance rack. Word, Apple's only how much? American Airlines is what? If American Airlines goes anywhere near $11, mark my words, people, I will show you the receipts. Thousands of dollars will be put on that damn stock. I promise you that, because either the world's going to end or it's going to bounce. And when it bounces, I'll be glad to take double my money in, a, in 48 hours. And I'm scared. It don't have to be double. If I put $10 on something and that shit do $2, if I put 1000 in it, I'm out of it. I'm out of it. I don't give a damn what nobody tell me. Okay? I'll be out of it. I just want to know I gained dramatically. So I can get up out of there. That's how I feel about the situation. So, and you keep playing that game over and over. Sell, take it back. Sell, take it back. You know, buy it, sell it, buy it, sell it, buy it, sell it, and keep making your money. All I'm using for this week is the money I made from doing that strategy. Anticipating the dead cat bounce. That's all I'm doing. And normally within a dead cat bounce, you got a window of opportunity that you got to understand unless you want to roll the dice. And even if I lost a few, I didn't lose. I say it like this. I spent $21 on most of my Royal Caribbean stock. But then when that Friday was over, it was still growing. It went as high as $47. I went and bought more again when it was at $31. I bought a whole bunch. So some of it was $21. And I was mad that I ain't buy more for 21. But I came in at 31 and it still went up to 47. So that was $16 profit still. I was very excited. Friday came and I seen it at $45. I got the hell out of it. Not because I'm scary, but I was anticipating that cat bounce. It was a good thing that I was up early to see it. I had to text all my people like, yo, it's, I think this shit's gonna bounce. I was up early enough. I turned my head, I looked back again. 30 minutes later, two more dollars dropped. I got out of there. I was so happy. So I lost a step because it went from 47 to 45. So I lost two dollars in every one. But keep in mind, I'm in my profit. I'm not in my loss. I lost two dollars on each of the stocks that I bought, each of the shares that I had but I still was in my gains at the end of the day. And I pulled out early enough because I want to see if I can go behind that $31 because I'm mad I never took advantage of the $21 a share. I'm mad still. I feel it every day. So the best thing that can happen to me is if that shit go back to $21, it would be crazy. But I wouldn't even wait for it to go to 21. I wouldn't have the intestinal fortitude to miss it again. But if it could go below $31, <laughs> For the second wave that I bought, before I went to 47, I'd be so proud of myself, I, you'd think I won the lottery. <clears throat> because this is a stock that traditionally is over $130. So if I can get it in the 20s, life is great.
But anyway, that's another conversation. These are thoughts that's going to be in my mind because the sun rises at 9.30 a.m. for me, Eastern time, when it comes to this market. Because there's gold in the crisis, people. There's gold in the crisis. And for the, for the people that microwave information that want to tell you, it's too risky, every day is going to fall, every day is crashing, then if you know that prophetically, if you really feel like that, Put your money on everything crashing. You know you can make money off of shit going down too. Money is not just there for you to gain or for the gains. The money's there too for the losses. You can put your money on the losses and make a whole bunch of money. What's wrong with you? That's how I know people don't know what they're talking about. Because if I spoke with such conviction, yo, everything's just going to drop anyway. Well, damn, bro, you should put everything on that. Or at least 50% of what you own. Since you know like that, that's going to happen. But when they have to put their money towards that conviction, they ain't gonna say shit. They like to walk around and tell you BS for free. But you say, oh, do you feel like that? Then it should be nothing to throw your money at. Then with the, oh, I don't know. Because you don't know how to make money off of the decline. You don't know how to put a, a put option out there. You understand the puts. You understand the calls. You know what I'm saying? Y'all call yourself shop calls. You really don't understand what the hell people be talking about. But let's go to the next one. And that's it. Because that was actually supposed to be the last slide. <laughs> because I'm gonna actually do something really nice when it comes to this. I have a very powerful presentation I'm gonna give to you before the Golden and Crisis class. I'm actually still giving some free classes because I wanna prepare the students that paid for the course. So I want the, the students that paid for the course and the students that didn't pay for the course keep up with the free classes so you can learn as much as possible because I don't want to start at a remedial level when I do the course. It'd be to everyone's benefit if you study the free classes so that way when I do the $99 class this coming Sunday, you can be locked in. It'd be better to get those free classes so that way Sunday we could just, we could do the behind the back, the 360s, the windmill, the jump from the fire line. That's the kind of moves I want to explain. I don't want to go into the ticker symbol it is the same as a stock symbol. It is most times and often an acronym for the name of the company. But considering there's so many companies, and depending if you're dealing with the New York Stock Exchange or another exchange, it might consist of three letters or four. But then there's other instances where it consists of five letters. I don't want to go through all that craziness with you. I'd rather do that stuff periodically during these classes. So we can jump right in it and make that money and, and Learn things that they try to give you a whole bunch of years of school and student loan debt for. <laughs> Get the information here. You see somebody giving it up to you for free, sit down, lock in, take your notes, double check it. I want you to, but you're going to realize I have a tendency to explain these things a lot better <laughs> than most people because I think the explanations, in some instances, people are just not good at explaining things, and in other instances, I believe that people are doing that on purpose so you won't be able to assimilate the data. They got to keep you away from it. So having said that, go to IamBrotherPolite.app. You can purchase the Gold in the Crisis class for $99. You can also register to the site for free. So when we give out these free PowerPoint presentations and the free newsletter, you and the free updates about the things that are free, you can have that information at your disposal. So in either event, Sign up, and then also when the, when the app actually comes out to the website, the website is a landing page, that's why it's called I am brother, P-O-L-I-G-H-T dot app. I also have it there pinned to the top. When it says dot app, don't text and say, brother, who like, yo, I can't find it. That's because you went to the app. Don't go to the app, we ain't published it yet, because we still hooking it up. But that's the landing page for the app, so you can go to I am brother, like dot app, you can register for free, register for free, or you can also pay for the gold in the crisis class. Either way, you good money, and then of course, if you want the credit restoration microwave, that's three grand, and we remove all your debt and put you in position so you can start really moving and shaking, because in this type of economy, <laughs> one or $2,000 can change your life now and also very much later. We saw the numbers here. Give you all facts, double check my references. I'm the only one out here that's like, yo, take the PowerPoint, Look at it, see if you can find fault or error. I wouldn't really suggest you go out your way to find error. I would suggest what's the most interesting to you. 
you go and you look for more data to compound interest on the understanding you already got or arrived at from the presentation. Peace to y'all. You go to brotherpolite45 at gmail.com if you're interested in purchasing any services. If you want the free updates, you go to imbrotherpolite.app. If you want to purchase the $99 class, you go to imbrotherpolite.app and you'll see it. It's entitled Gold in the Crisis. Peace and many blessings. Evil, perpetual success. I love you all.